Hi, this is QA Shahin, and today we're going to continue looking at the page object model for WebDriver.js and we're going to try and, and uh, wrap things up in this video. So the agenda of this video is going to be very simple. We're actually going to look at how we can introduce multiple page objects as part of our existing page object framework. In the previous video, we looked at introducing this concept of a base page. And from the base page, we wrote a home page, which extended the base page. We also wanted to introduce this concept of having very specific methods belong to specific pages, as well as trying to share the instance of the driver across other pages. In the test itself, nothing really changed. The test sort of remained as it was. So when we ran this, what essentially happened was we were able to access methods from the base page through the home page object. So in this video, we're going to start looking at actually doing a little bit more. In this instance, when we click on the adoption link, what we want to happen is to then start using functions and methods in an adoption page instead, which at the moment does not exist. So let's have a look at how this would actually look like on the test site itself. So the first thing we're going to do is just navigate to the test site. So really quickly, we're going to go to www.thetestroom.com. So this is my blog site and then scroll down and then just go to the test web app. So thus far, the test does the very simple steps. It navigates to the test room, which we did, and then it just clicks on the adoption link, which is that. Now, once we click on the adoption link, the next thing I think I'd like to do is to maybe click on this button here, which will then take us to this particular page. Now, when we click on this button, if you notice, this button only belongs on the adoption page. So one of the first things we'd like to do is actually create a brand new page object, which actually clicks on the adoption page. Now, before we do that, there's a couple of things we need to do really quickly in our base page and home page to clean things up a little bit. Now, first of all, on the base page, the first thing I want to do is actually write this driver so that it actually becomes shareable across all pages. Now, in this case, let's just assume we just create an adoption page which looks exactly like this. Because of the fact that we create a new instance of the home page, which in effect we'll call the constructor, what will end up happening is you will actually end up opening multiple browser instances of the driver. And now that is something we don't want. What we want to do is basically share the instance of the driver. So in the previous video, we actually touched on that concept, i.e. to share the instance of the driver. But if you think about it, each time you call this constructor, you will end up creating a brand new driver, i.e. you will end up creating multiple windows. And that's something we don't actually want. So the first thing to do in the base page itself anyway, is to somehow find a way of making sure that even if the constructor is called multiple times, it only returns the same instance of the driver. And how can we do this? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is cut this out and put it up there so that it becomes accessible to everything. And then I'm just going to change this to a var. And now what we do is we actually are creating a variable of the driver. Now inside the constructor, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to use a global keyword. And I'm going to make this equal to the driver. So what is happening here? Now, because our application is running through node, i.e. when we run the test, we say node.test. Node has this concept of globalizing variables. In other words, once this variable is initialized once, it sort of becomes shareable across multiple scripts. So by defining global driver here, this driver then becomes accessible to almost every single script 
that is running as part of our test. So now that we've done that, we can start removing instances of this. If we go to our home page, we need to repeat the same thing. And in this case, all we really need to do is to remove the instance of this. And now what should happen is now when we run our test, it is simply going to use the global driver instead of the instance of the Vista driver. So let's quickly test that and make sure that's working. Okay, so it looks like it worked. That's great. Now with these changes in place, now we can start to think about introducing an adoption page. Now before we do that, what we'd like to do is actually somehow return an instance of the adoption page. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's go ahead and actually create the page itself. So I'm going to say class adoption page, which extends base page. And I'm going to say model dot exports is equal to new adoption page. And I'm going to save this as adoption.js and I'm going to save it as a JavaScript file. Okay, so what do I do in this particular page? So in this page, if we go back to the website, I want to click on this link. So if I inspect this, then I can see it has an ID of check button 01. So I am going to just Copy this for now. And I'm going to paste it in here so that I've got reference to it in a second. So what I want to do is actually click on that. So if I have a look, this is getting the status of a lion. So all I'm going to say is something like get lion availability and in here, I am going to say something like driver dot find element by ID. And once I found it, I will try and click on it. So in here, we are going to copy in this value. Since we're using driver and we're using the by locator, I need to import in a couple of things. So I need to import in both web driver and the by. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to place it right here. And since I'm also using the base page, I need this also. Okay, so this should now give us an adoption page. Now we actually need to start using this. So how do we use this? So if we go back to our home, in home we click on the adoption link. So wouldn't it be great if the adoption could actually return a reference to this new adoption page? Well, it can, and we can do it through this. We can just return a require. And in here, we can then say the name of the page itself, which is adoption. And this should now return a reference to this page. Which means if we now go back to the test, which is invoking this method, i.e. in here, we can now say that this will return a new variable instance to adoption page. And once we click on this, which then returns basically the adoption page, that is then stored in this variable. So once we store it, we can start to access all the methods in the adoption page, i.e. this particular method in here. So I'm just going to copy this into the test and let's just save everything. And now when I run the test, 
assuming all the syntax and everything is right and I haven't made any silly mistakes anyway, we should now run a single browser and it will navigate to the test site. It will then click on the adoption link, which would give us reference to the adoption page. And then we will try and click on the check button for the line. Okay, so let's run this and see what happens. Great, it looked like it worked first time. So what did we cover in this video? So in this video, we finally wrapped up our adventure into looking into page objects. Most importantly, we finally were able to see how to write multiple page objects and also share the same instance of the driver. We were able to see how one page object could return a reference to another page object, which basically helps us to write much more clearer test without having to pollute our test with an unnecessary amount of import statements or anything like that. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you in the next one.